Hello and welcome back to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. I'm Victoria. On this channel, I feature all things scrapbooking and crafting. If that's your jam, make sure you hit that subscribe button. When you do, click the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted to the channel. Today, I'm sharing an exclusive process video that I actually made for my Patreon membership community. And I'm sharing it with you today to let you know that in fact, I do have a membership community where I offer exclusive content. This is, video is an example of the types of content that I do offer for my Patreon community. If you're not familiar with Patreon and you want to learn more, make sure you click on the link in the description and come join us for not only exclusive process videos, but an opportunity for creative workshops on a monthly basis, as well as critique groups. To learn more and to join the Victoria Marie Scrap Boss Patreon community, make sure you click on the link in the description below. And without further ado, enjoy this preview of an exclusive Victoria Marie Patreon video. Back to our project. So I'm going to be using a kit from Felicity Jane called June. I just love the colors in this. I'm just kind of giving you, uh, showing you the example of the pattern papers that are included. There's also some really fun embellishments, some uh, ribbon that came with that kit, which I'm going to use and then I'm going to take it off <laughs> the project, which you'll see in a few. I also have some die cut embellishments as well as these really fun tags that came with these, with this particular kit. I'm going to use that as a layering element. I also have the font stickers that came with the kit. I'm going to use that to put the year on the layout. There are some binding rings there if you want to do a little mini album. And then, of course, some puffy stickers and some stamps. I don't know if this kit is available. If it is, I'll post a link uh, down below if you are interested in the kit. Now, I reached my stash for some letter stickers. I have several Felicity Jane letters that are left over from previous kits, and I didn't know what I wanted to use. I know that I want the main title, or the title in general, to be in black font stickers, but I didn't know what size or what style. So I just pulled out a whole bunch that I'm going to work with here in just a few. So there's my photo strip. I just trimmed that down again. That was printed on eight and a half by 11 paper. And then I trimmed it having some white border or having a white border around it. Victoria learned how to talk. Okay. Also have some embellishments that I pulled specifically for this project as I went through all the embellishments in the little embellishment pack to see what's going to work. Now I need this photo to kind of pop out a little bit. I'm using that stripe pattern paper, which is fantastic. I like the horizontal line of it. You can also flip it to make it vertical, but since my photo is vertical, I thought it would be nice to do sort of a horizontal element to bring a little bit of balance. Also, I'm gonna use this pattern paper, which it kind of looks like it's stitched in the back. It's really cool. And I'm gonna use that to sort of add a point of delineation between that photo strip and then the pattern paper background. The photo just looked like it was sort of fading away in the background. Now, as I'm getting this all set up, a little bit about the story. So my daughter, as I've mentioned in other videos, is really into the Percy Jackson book series. In fact, she read the entire, well, there's five parts of the series or five series within the, within the canon. Anyway, she read all of the books from January up until about mid-spring, like three months time. And she's completely obsessed and definitely very much a part of the fandom and likes to talk to other kids about Percy Jackson the whole nine. Well, apparently in the fandom, uh, a lot of the Percy Jackson fans don't like the movies. There were two movies that were produced. And according to what I could find out, the author of the series did not like how the movies came out. In fact, um, he felt as though they were not staying true to the books in some way, as much as one can when they're making a movie adaptation of a book. But apparently there are so many departures that the fandom was like, no, <laughs> it completely rejected the movies. They hate it. And my daughter is definitely in good company with that. So she decided after watching the two movies that she was going to make a list of all of the discrepancies and the departures with the characters, the plot, the whole nine. And she recited both of these lists. They were about 60 item list to me and my wife over the course of two nights. <laughs> it took about an hour for each list. And we patiently sat there and listened to her rant on and on that she typed up this list. She sat down one afternoon. It actually took her a couple hours for each list and typed it all up, her rant. And I think she uses this as talking points in her, she has an out school class that she takes that the students talk about the Percy Jackson series. And so, you know, she's using her research and her list to talk, you know, wax poetically <laughs> about the discrepancies. And I've never seen a kid so invested in this. And apparently it's a major thing. Like the fans just don't like these movies. They love the books, but they just don't like the movies. So I decided this definitely was worthy of having a scrapbook page that I will put in her album just to document how, one, how much she's into this book series. And two, it's just really funny that, you know, a kid would write two lists, two very long lists of why they absolutely hated the Percy Jackson movie series. 
So speeding ahead with this layout, what I did was I took some of the tags from the kit and I put down the photo with the tape, obviously with the foam and couldn't pull it back up. So I had to cut the tags and what I did is I'm creating sort of a layer of them going vertically down with the photo strip. And this is a really good way to use, particularly if you get a pack tag, you're like, I don't think I'm gonna use this. Use them for layering, why not? And then with the last tag, of course I trimmed them because I can't slip them underneath <laughs> the photo because I glued it down. Um, so I trimmed them so that they would fit. And then with this last tag, I'm gonna use some of the ribbon from the kit wrapped that through one of the little tags, a little Swiss dot tag, but sadly that ribbon is not going to stay because the part where the ribbon is jetting out there, that's where my journaling is going to go. And I did not realize that until I um, was starting to make these adjustments and I really like the ribbon on there. And right when I printed out my journaling, I thought, oh man, it's not going to fit <laughs> that spot with the ribbon there. So anyway, at this point, I'm making adjustments to the tags, trying to decide how I want to situate them, making sure that I have enough space for the title. At least I was concerned about that, at least, and totally forgot about the journaling. Ultimately, I decided to go with my original plan to where I have a tag there at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom. I used the black and white Swiss dot one as well as the grid one. Black and white adds a lot of grounding to a layout, and so I thought that would work perfectly with the colors of the kit, and that's usually how Felicity Jane kits are designed. I go ahead and tack everything down, all right? So I'm gonna go with the plan. Okay, so now it's time to embellish, I believe, or at least to kind of test to see where I want things to go. I don't want anything covering up, covering up my daughter in the photo, so I'm very, very intentionally putting this large die cut at the bottom to where it covers the tag mostly. Then I thought I would bring in this other tag that came in that little pack. It has little rainbows on it, but I thought, no, that's overkill. So I'm gonna put that away. I thought maybe I'll pop, tuck it in this other tag that kind of looks like a pocket. Uh, no, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more adhesive there, make sure that's all tacked down, and then I realize I'm out of adhesive. <laughs> I go and get new adhesive, and then I carry on. All right, so to the left-hand side of the photo, I have these semicircle die cuts that came with the die cut pack, and typically this is not something I would probably use. So I thought, you know what, let me just use it to on the other side, creating yet sort of another grounding layer where some embellishments and stuff could go potentially, but also draws the eye and it's a different shape. So that adds a little bit more interest and I wanted to use them up because otherwise they would just stay in the pack. Sometimes I'm not particularly sure if an element will work unless I lay it down. That's kind of like my motto, just try it. <laughs> just put it down and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you can always pull it up. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of adhesive there sticking those little semicircles down and I'm thinking okay that looks really good. Now I'm going to add a little label because I want something horizontal that's going to go there at the top with those vertical semicircles. Then I also want to use this little floral element. If you're not familiar with Felicity Jane kits they do come with a lot of floral type elements. Uh, it's sort of a some people call it more of a feminine scrapbook kit. Um, I think it's more modern colors a little bit more muted and soft very beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of foam there to that large floral die cut. And I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. That foam is from scrapbook.com. I get asked that a lot. You can get different sizes of their foam. And I think they also have like foam dots or foam squares and some other foam adhesive products as well that you can check out. Okay, so now I'm just fiddling around trying to figure out, okay, do I want that flower there? Yes, ultimately I do because I don't want to cover up anything else. And it's right around this point that I start recognizing, you know, that ribbon's gonna be in the way. I'm probably gonna have to move that. And I'll put my title down, which is fine. And I'll shop the journaling around the page, but ultimately I end up moving that ribbon. So you'll see that here in just a second. I wanna use this label really bad, which I am gonna use it, but in a different spot on the layout here in just a few. Adding some adhesive there to the little floral elements there at the top. And also at this point, I'm feeling that the layout is a little unbalanced. I hadn't planned on doing three clusters, which you do three clusters in a triangle will give you a visceral uh, triangle, which is great to add balance. But sometimes you don't always have to do that depending on the design that you're working with. But for this particular one, I kind of figured out towards the end that I needed to have a little bit more balance on the left-hand side of the layout, which you'll see here in just a few. Before I go any further, I am going to work on the title. So I bring out some thickers that I'm going to use. And I settled on this thicker style. I'll put the name of these thickers uh, down below so you can check that out. I don't know if they're still available. They may be. 
Um, so I'm going to spell out the Percy Jackson rant, but the word rant is going to be in a different font style. And so I tested lots of the fonts that I pulled out. They were either too big or I didn't like the style of the font or I didn't have enough letters to spell out the word rant. I thought I was going to go with that particular font. There's one that's a little bit too big. It's not going to, well, no, it fits just fine, but I think I didn't have an A. So there I am gesturing <laughs> like, what? I don't have an A. <laughs> So I pull out this set of thickers, which I've used multiple times. I have several packs of these. And here I'm able to spell the word rant. Now, originally I was going to use black letter stickers, but I wanted the word rant to stand out. And I think that looks a lot better than black. I'm going to add a little bit more extra adhesive, some liquid adhesive. And I hope it stays as if you've been following me over the past week or so, our air conditioner went out and it's been rather warm here in my studio. <laughs> so. Um, of course, heat does impact some of the products that we use, including uh, liquid adhesive. So I'm hoping that this adhesive will perform and keep these stickers on the page. So I'm putting a little bit of that adhesive there on the back. And there, I love the way that title looks. It's so editorial. And I like using uh, different font stickers, usually about two, uh, particularly if I want to really emphasize a word in a title. All right, so I'm going to bring out some of these puppy stickers that came in the collection. And I love using textured items and puffy stickers are really easy to use and they're just one of my favorite embellishments. So I'm going to pop little flowers and leaves here and there on the layout. I'm trying to decide where I want them. I shop around the layout, just testing things out. I do that a lot whenever I'm working on a scrapbook page. If I'm uncertain, I will just shop it around the page and see how it looks. So sometimes you just never know. Uh, we can sit there and look at the layout, but until we start putting things down, uh, then we never know. You can always use a powder tool or rub off some of the sticky if you're using a sticker uh, and you're not quite sure if you want to lay it down and use it in a particular position, you can dull the sticky, lay it down on your layout just so you can see what it looks like and that way it won't stick to your page. And then of course, when you decide to use it, you can just add some adhesive on it and keep it going. So I switched out the label there at the top and I am spelling out the year 2021. This is my lazy way of adding the date to the layout. I don't remember what the date was and I didn't write it down and I was using my phone to record this video so I wasn't going to stop the video to look it up but I do know it was this year <laughs> it was sometime in the summer so I'm just going to put 2021 and of course that will go in the section of her scrapbook for um, this particular year so I'm not too worried about it now with those little cuts that I had left over from the tags I added another one to the left hand side because I really felt that this layout needed a little bit more balance so I'm going to use that remaining piece of that tag, that blue gingham tag. And now I am trying to decide, well, what do I want to put on it next? I could leave it just the way it is, but of course I'm not. I'm going to add some flowers. I'm trying to use the die cuts. Use up these elements on our kits, right? We buy all of these supplies and then, you know, we don't use as much as we think we probably should because we're trying to hold on to it because we don't want to use it up because it's so pretty. Use up your stuff because guess what? We're just going to buy some more. So I try to, whenever I get kits, to use as much of it as I possibly can. So I'm going to go ahead and build out another cluster and automatically I really, really love how much balance that provides to the layout that just really appeals to my design sensibilities. So I'm going to fool around with this label here. I thought I wanted another horizontal element, but I decide against it. I think the stripes in the pattern paper provide that a little bit more better than that label. I'm also going to add some more little puffies there to that cluster, a little flower, as well as those little black puffy dots, which is a great alternative to adding sprinkles to your page. If you want kind of a sprinkly little look, you can use some little small puffy dots or enamel dots. Those work well. And then I'm going to add in my journaling, which basically talks about my daughter making a list and ranting and whatnot. And I printed that out on, vell on vellum. Apparently, I can't say vellum today. I went ahead and removed the ribbon so I can have room for my journaling. I will always sacrifice a decorative element for words every single time. So I can always work around the design. I just want to make sure the words are on the page. Once I have that adhered, I'm going to add in some American Crafts black and white twine. There are some holes left from where I stapled that ribbon in place on that tag. So I'm going to use this twine to cover up those holes and no one will know the wiser. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap that around. I added a tiny bit of adhesive to the back of the tag there at the top, and then I'm just going to wrap it around. Usually adding ribbon to tags is a last minute decision. And I end up pulling the tag up and adding the ribbon. It's a whole thing because <laughs> I never learn. I never learned my lesson. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that journaling is tacked down as best as I can. I'm making some adjustments there to the title. 
And I believe that's all I do with this particular layout. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Thanks so much for stopping by today. And don't forget, subscribe to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel when you do click the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted. And also, if you're interested in becoming a Victoria Marie Patreon community member, make sure you click on my Patreon link in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.